Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another teleseminar with the Accidental Salesman. This afternoon, I'm delighted to have with me Charlie Lawson, who's the National Director for BNI, and he's here to help us win more business with large corporates through local networking groups. Good afternoon, Charlie. Afternoon, Richard. How are you? I'm great. Thank you very much. Before we get started, perhaps I can have a little bit about your background and how you became an expert on local networking groups. Absolutely. I mean, my history of local networking groups is entirely through BNI, uh, the organisation I'm the uh, national director of. Uh, I'd been in corporate life beforehand. I was in IT, didn't really enjoy it, to be honest. Uh, and I was given an opportunity within the BNI business. Um, it was through a family connection uh, originally. But I was given an opportunity to um, get involved with the BNI franchise in the, the area where I was living in, South East London. And I worked with a number of uh, BNI groups in that part of the world. Uh, this was back in 2004 I started, and then my roles changed a few times. I uh, moved to a different part of the world uh, in northwest London, and then uh, the opportunity came to, to take over the national business, which is what happened three years ago. Great. Okay. I do a lot of networking, and I regularly come across people who want to do business with large corporates. They've tried local networking groups, and it's just not worked for them. Where do you think they're going wrong? Well, it's a very good question, and in, in, indeed, it's a very common question. It happens a lot because people want to get in, uh, in, in network with large corporates, but hey, typically large corporates don't go and network in the places that, that us as small businesses are networking in. So, very good question. I think one of the key problems is that of premature solicitation, which you've got to say very carefully. But uh, premature solita solicitation happens a lot in, in, in networking. Uh, it's where we perhaps believe we're connected with someone, and with social media, it's very easy to be connected with people. Uh, you know, give you an example on Twitter, you can follow Richard Branson, for example. Uh, and just because I happen to be following him doesn't mean I can def definitely sell to him. Um, that uh, that's, would definitely be pr premature solicitation. It's all about building relationships, networking is. So we've got to build an, uh, a relationship first before we try and get networking straight away with the large corporates. Another challenge is that often people in small businesses don't even try uh, they just think, well, you know, the bigger corporates are out of my league. It's just not going to happen. So they don't even put themselves in, in, in a position where they might be able to network with the, with the bigger corporates. So there's two key challenges that people face. I also come across a lot of people who know lots of people. So they've developed the relationships, but they still don't win any business with large corporates. Where do you think they're going wrong? There's probably a number of ways which they are. Uh, a possible one that they, they are is they're just not asking for it. I think that part of the, the challenge, as I said, Small businesses don't even necessarily try because they think they're out of the league, or they, they, they try but they're taking the wrong approach to doing it. They're perhaps not asking directly and specifically for the sort of business that they're after, and I suspect that that happens a lot. We've seen, certainly seen it with a lot of members uh, within the BNI organisation, uh, where they want to get to, to network with the, with the larger businesses or a specific business, but they're not specific about it themselves, and I feel that that's uh, one area that they could really focus on to try and improve their, uh, their results. It's getting yourself in a position to be able to speak to the people you want to speak to. Uh, I mean, I'll give you an example. This is one of the early networking tips that I learned. Essentially, it, it says that you should go and network where your target market and hang out, if you like, and hang out yep. in, in inverted commas. For example, you want to, you want to speak to solicitors. As a, as, a, as a group, and perhaps there's, there's a, a big corporate you'd like to speak to within that. You want to speak to Clifford Chance solicitors, for example. If I wanted to do that, I would go and talk to as many solicitors as I could, build a relationship with them, and get them to invite me to some sort of networking session that's being run by the legal profession. Hey, it could be one that's hosted by Clifford Chance in their offices, for example. And you, just by being there, you're going to give yourself a chance to network with the type of people you want to, want to get in touch with. So what you're saying is you can use local networking groups yeah, absolutely. I gave, gave the example there. You go and talk to your, a, a, a local solicitor that you know well, someone in the legal profession, get to know them, build a relationship with them, and then find out where they network. Lots of industries have industry-specific networking sessions, and, yeah, that would be one way of getting in to talk to the larger corporates. What would be really great is to get your best tips for networking into large corporates. What would the first one be? I think the first one I, I think about is, is more of a general state of mind, if you like. And I would say don't expect it to happen. We often heard of the six degrees of separation, and that to anyone on earth is connected to anyone else by six degrees. I might know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows the person I want to speak to. It gives some people a, a, a full sense of expectations that connections are bound to happen at some point in time. The study done by Ivan Meisner, who was the founder of BNI, 
found that, yeah, there are people who are connected by six degrees, but they tend to be the most well-connected people. And the rest of us sort of follow on behind, and, you know, we use those, those people to get to the, the connections that we want. Typically, actually, he found that 29% of the, the business community are these people who are uh, connected um, to anyone by six degrees. Not all of us are. So my point is, don't expect it to happen. If you want it to happen, then you've got to act like a top networker, and then that, that will increase the chances of it happening. What I hear you're saying is that a lot of people go into networking, and just because they're connected to somebody, they're sitting there waiting for something to happen rather than doing something about it. Absolutely. It's, it's you know, any good networker, well, in fact, in anything in life, but in networking this particularly applies, you know, the more you put in, the more you'll get out of it. And if you sit there waiting for it to happen, nothing's going to happen, honestly. You've got to be proactive, try and help other people first, and then it will come back to you in, in the future. Tip number two would be, to be honest, it's a tip that I'd give to anyone who wants to, to network, whoever you want to network, whether you're trying to get into large corporates or, or small, it really doesn't matter. That is, networking is about building relationships. Uh, I'll come back to the point I was saying about with pr premature solicitation. If we go out and try and sell to people directly, especially in the early stages of doing networking, people automatically get turned off by that. You know, think of the last networking event you went to. Were you there to buy anything? No, you're not there to buy. You're there to try and network your business. The fact is, nobody's there to buy. They're all there to try and uh, develop their business. So there's no point going anywhere trying to sell anything. Networking is about building relationships. And that relationship will start with a simple conversation. It will maybe end with the exchange of a business card uh, and an ag uh, agreement to meet up perhaps uh, at a later date to have a coffee or have a chat about how the two parties can go forward and perhaps help each other. And hey, over time, you build a relationship with that person. The key to networking isn't what we know or who we know. Uh, it's not even how well we know them. It's about who the other person knows and would, it, would they be prepared to put us, uh, us in touch with them. And that's where it starts to get interesting. When we're thinking about getting into the large corporates, we've got to think, who do, who do our contacts know? Who do they know who um, we might be interested in talking to? Somewhere along the line, you've got to start talking business. Where does that happen? Well, going back to the tips, I'll then go to our, to our next tip, and that's where we're starting to get interesting, start to move towards business, is that's where we ask specifically for who we want to speak to. I want to speak to the marketing manager, at uh, ABC Company, whoever that is, I need to know that person's name. And that seems counterintuitive. You might think, that, oh, just, oh, any, any business in the communications field, that would be good for me. But no, I need to know which company it is. Do I want to speak to Vodafone, for example? Who, what, what level do I need to speak to within that company? Do I speak to the marketing department, the HR department, the finance department? Do I need to speak to the CEO? Whoever it is, we need to know who, who that is. To, to, to gain success from, the, from, from this process. Not only job title, we need to know their name as well. Tip about that is to, very simple, um, pick up the phone and dial whichever organization you're asking for. Whoever answers the phone will be on guard. That's, that's their job to not put you through to whoever you want to speak to. So you just ask a very different question. You say, oh, I want to speak to the finance manager, for example. What's their name? I'd like to put something in the post to them. And that's all I'm going to ask for them. I'm not going to try and get, get through to them. I'm not going to try and speak to them at that point. I'm just going to say, I'd like to put something in the post to them. Can I have their name, please? And thankful that they can get someone off the phone very quickly and they can field the call easily, they'll give you their name, no problem. It's also very easy with the, the Internet uh, and social media these days. Look up on LinkedIn. You can find out who, who you need to speak to very easily. Find the name, job role, obviously the company that you want to do business with. Uh, once you've got those, you can use your existing relationships with your networking contacts to get in. How do you know when you've built the relationship up enough that you can, you can actually ask? The answer to that is how long is a piece of string. If for every single business rela networking relationship you have, it's going to be slightly different. Typically, what I would suggest any business does is don't ask, don't ask, don't ask, don't ask about your own business until that person says, how can I help you? Because what that suggests is you've given enough to the relationship for them to want to help. And that's really crucial. It's one thing being able to help, but actually wanting to help is, is really important. So uh, we talk about something in BNI called the you game. If I'm in a conversation with someone, I meet someone in a networking event, I'll always try and ask them about their business first. If I've 
do that and we end up talking about their business first before mine, I've won the you game because the other person, you, has spoken first. And it, it extends over, over the course of a networking relationship. I want to keep helping them, keep helping them, get, live givers gain, and in, in time that will come back to me. So okay. I, I guess the answer to your question, you can't put a finite amount of time is on it, but when someone asks, so how can I help you then, you know you can ask then. So that's tip number three. Tip number yep. four? Um, I, well, we talked about tip number three is all about um, making sure that uh, you ask. You've got to ask specifically who it is. But crucially, after that, you've got to justify what that means. What will you do for the person that uh, you want to speak to? You know, it's all well and good saying that uh, you'd like to help that person, but what are you going to do for them? How are you going to help them develop their business? What are the returns you're going to give them? What are the benefits they're going to see after that? You've got to sum that up succinctly uh, in in a statement. So perhaps you'd like to talk to so-and-so about their communications because you'll help them increase their bottom line by uh, a certain amount. Whatever it is, you've got to have a real good justification for it so that the person who uh, has the potential contact can think, okay, well, I can see how how I can help. I I understand why they want to speak to, to that person. Then we're going to be all prepared to have the conversation for you. Perhaps I'm, I'm a web designer, for example, and I want to speak to, to a, a large corporate. And okay, one of my contacts will perhaps be able to help me because they've got a they, they've got an, an in to the person that I'm, I'm interested in. They also want to help me because I've helped them enough. But then they've got to get you've got to get over the hump of the, the, the question that says, well, I already know a good web designer. Why would I want to speak to this one? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you've got to, you've got to have your justification. Tip five, a bit more general this one. I would ju- just say don't expect miracles overnight. It's not going to happen straight away necessarily. This, this practice of being specific and asking for the people you want to speak to, it won't happen overnight. It often takes time, especially when you're talking about local networking groups like a BNI group. There's a certain number of people in the group. Maybe there's 35, 40 people in the group. And it may well be that the people there don't know the person you want to speak to or don't know someone who knows the person you want to speak to. It, that does happen. My suggestion would be to keep asking. Each week you attend the, meet, the meeting, keep asking for that same referral. One of two things will likely happen. Number one, one week there'll be a, a visitor or to the group who's, who's first time attendee or the substituting for someone else. And guess what? They know the person you want to speak to. So if you hadn't asked that week, you wouldn't have got the potential in to, that, to the person you're after. So keep asking each week. Secondly as well, what you often find is because in a networking group you tend to build up very good relationships with the people there, they want to help. So I've seen it before, where the group get, or someone in the group gets so sick of you asking for the same person each each week, they actually proactively go and do something about it. And that's very interesting when people do that. I was uh, it's when I was working in BNI in South East London, a, a member in the group, uh, she was a florist, really wanted to speak to. Uh, there's a, it was a funeral centre in in Catford in South East London, and I didn't know. I, I knew of the organisation because literally I drove past it on a regular basis. Uh, and I was just driving back from the meeting uh, that day, and this lady, the florist, said, I'd like to speak to someone at the, uh, at the Catford Funeral Home. And I was just driving past, and I thought, hang on. Pulled over, got my phone out, and rang them, and made a, I made a call on behalf of the, the other person. They took the call. And I just said, look, I'm trying to help this person out. They're really good business. I know them well. Um, they'd really like a chance to, to speak to you and, sh- and demonstrate what, they're, uh, what they could do for your business. And guess what? They took the call, and it led to a referral and business. Back to the main point, just don't expect miracles overnight, though. It will take time for this strategy to work. You've got to have the necessary level of relationships first, and then it just takes time for the, uh, for the results to come through. So if someone's listened to this because they want to win business with large corporates, how long should they reasonably expect the process to take before they okay, start yeah. getting results? Well, as I said, it's not going to happen overnight, um, although it does from time to time happen. I, I'll give you a, one example of, of where it happened pretty much overnight. I was running a, a training session for BNI members, and we were asking people to be specific, and this was, in fact, a very good example of, of someone who wanted to speak to a large corporate. This was a, a lady who was a BNI member. She was uh, an events company, and I was educating on this process on how to be specific and, and why it works and I could tell I didn't have full buy-in from this lady she, she just didn't believe me that this was going to work so I said go on just give it a go try it and see what happens who would you like to speak to and she said it's not going to work and we went through this a couple of times back and forth I said go on just give it a go she said all right you know sort of almost half sarcastic tone said I'd like to speak to the 
uh, marketing manager of the Hilton Ho Hotel Group. Is that any good for you? And I said, okay, well, let's just see what happens. There was a room of about 45 people there, and a the guy, I kid you not, he was sat two seats down from her, uh, so very close, and said, I, I live next door to the uh, chairman of the Hilton Hotel Group. Uh, I could probably make an introduction for you. Would that be of interest? And the look on her face was, uh, wow, okay, um, I, I, I get what you were saying. So it does happen in that way. It can happen. What I, I would say, going back to the question how long it does take, though, is we've got to make sure we get to the point where people want to help us. Networking is about building relationships. In a referral situation, there's, there's three parties. The receiver of the referral gets, uh, gets some work, so uh, you know, my, my business it benefits. The third party for whom the referral to is, gets a, a benefit because they get a, a service or a need covered, or whatever it might be. And also the giver of the referral, crucially, gains kudos with both of those other parties. Number one, the, uh, the, the, the third party has the service done, they're happy. And number two, the receiver of the referral is, is great because their benefits, uh, business has benefited from it. The thing is, though, with referral uh, marketing is that we rely on strong rela relationships to make that happen. I, as the referral giver, cannot pass the referral unless I know that they're going to do a good job. I just can't do it. Because let's say that the person uh, for whom the referral is to, the, rece uh, the recipient of the service, let's say that's someone who's you know, a client of mine, paying my mortgage, feeding my kids. If that relationship was to be ruined, I'm going to suffer from that. And so I'm not going to risk my reputation on passing a referral unless I know that the provider of the service is going to do a good job. So I'd say the time element, it's, it's how long it takes for me to be sure that that relationship isn't going, to be, uh, isn't going to be jeopardized. And it'll be the same for anyone who passes any referral. It might be different levels of trust are required, but still trust needs to be, uh, needs to be there. So when we look at local networking groups, and we've talked about yeah. the fact that uh, small businesses tend to be in these local networking groups. Are there circumstances when there are actually large corporates that go along to these networking groups as well? It does happen from time to time. I mean, to be honest, mainly the groups are full of small businesses, definitely. But there are some bigger businesses that are involved in, in organizations like BNI. Uh, I'll give you one example, particularly uh, the banks uh, are very much involved in um, BNI groups. Um, you know, it's my belief that bigger business will wake up one day to the fact that uh, they need to do more networking. And when they do, we'll see a lot more of them in, in organizations like BNI. With the banks, as I mentioned, there obviously they're, they're you know all high street names are, are involved in, in BNI, and we've asked them why they get involved in BNI because we like to, to develop our relationships with them. We get some fascinating answers when we ask that. You'd have thought that they just were interested in the business, but actually, what the uh, the bigger the, the banks see is the chance just for their um, their relationship managers to be out talking and networking with local businesses they find that very powerful uh, even if it won them no business at all the fact that they're out there being seen in the community uh, and also uh, getting the the development the, the development that comes from being a member of an organization like BNI just simply standing up and presenting your business effectively uh, that's a uh, powerful education they 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 enjoy uh, and also just the the ability to um Build, you know, learn the process of building relationships, which is uh, they, they found very valuable. So, uh, yeah, the, the, there's a lot of value seen in, in, in small business networking groups like BNI uh, from, the, from the bigger business. You're a national director of BNI, and they run local groups. How do they work, and how are they different? Okay, uh, what BNI does is uh, sets up uh, groups of businesses where there's only one person per professional category. Uh, and then they train the groups to be very effective at finding referral business for one another. If, if small businesses don't get business out of their BNI group, they're going to leave. So we rely on uh, making sure that we uh, educate our members to show them how to get good business from a group. What sets BNI apart are two main things. Number one, the structure of the groups. We've uh, got feedback off uh, people who come and visit groups for the first time, and Almost across the board, the, the most commonly appreciated aspect for, uh, about BNI from the visitors is that there is a strong structure that uh, makes the business work. You know, you've got to be there. You've got to be there every week. You've got to get there nice and early. Typically, they're all, mostly breakfast meetings. Uh, they're early, so not to cut into the, into the working day, but you've got to be there at the crack of dawn. Uh, there's a, 
there's an expectation you're going to participate. I mean, if you sit there every week expecting referrals to come to you, you know, it's going to show up pretty quickly that you're just in it for yourself and you're not really uh, there to help others. Um, so, yeah, the structure uh, is, is one of the uh, one of the reasons why it works. The other thing that really sets us apart is the the results that we generate. BNI operates on a giver's gain philosophy in that if I can give you business, uh, you'll want to give me business in return. But when that business comes in return, we track everything that every bit of business that's passed within BNI groups. Groups in the UK last year turned over over £269 million pounds worth of business, and we believe that's actually quite a conservative estimate because what typically happens is there's a lot of other business that gets generated through a, a BNI group. We call them spin-off bits of business. So perhaps if you've done a good bit of work for me, I'm going to be pleased about it. I'm going to refer you on to someone else, uh, totally separate to the BNI group, but that's still business for you. And we believe there's a lot more business that actually happens on top of the uh, on top of the business that we do track. Last year, we and I groups turned over 269 million pounds worth of business. Our goal is to get that number to 1 billion pounds per year, and our goal is to do that by 2020. But if, if essentially, we deliver results. So it's a, it's about the structure and the results that we uh, we deliver. BNI is now in 48 different countries. It started in the U.S. Uh, and came over to, uh, well, expanded to Canada. Uh, it was started in the U.S. in 85, expanded to Canada in 1995, and came over the Atlantic to the U.K. in 96, and since then has gone gone all over the place, largely by referral, I should say. Um, across the world, we've got about 135,000 members, about 6,800 chapters. Um, there's a lot of people doing business, and uh, we're starting to measure the amount of business in, in billions when we look at it worldwide. I think what's powerful for, for an individual business is, well, okay, I appreciate that there's always going to be large numbers, 269 million pounds worth of business in the UK last year. That's great, but what am I going to see uh, myself? And it's really about what the return that I can get as a, as a small business. Uh, and what we've seen across uh, various surveys that we've, we've done is that the average business in BNI will turn over 26,000 pounds. I just say uh, we're all about delivering results and tracking and ensuring that uh, tracking those results and ensuring that uh, our members do get one. Because if our members don't get any business from BNI, well, they'll leave. Uh, and if that's the case, then we don't have a business. So it's in our interest to make sure our members get to get business. As I say, £26,000 is an average. There's plenty of businesses turning over many, many times more than that. I was talking to a printer only the other day uh, who's, who's turning over. Uh, well in excess of £100,000 a year from uh, from his membership. How can people get more information about BNI? Presumably you've got websites and, and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Well, primary place for, uh, for for information would be our website, www.bni.eu. You can uh, call the national office here at 01923 891 999, 0193 891 999, uh, or alternatively, get along and visit a BNI group. There's been no point in, in thinking about BNI until you've gone and witnessed a group and seen, seen it in action, seen what happens. So uh, by all means, go, get along and visit a group. They, they run up and down the country. Well, thank you very much, Charlie, and thank you everybody else for joining in. If you're not a member of the Accidental Sales and Business Development Club, then please join at www theaccidentalsalesman.com and I'll keep you informed of future teleseminars, competitions and lots of other free stuff, all free and all for the accidental salesman. Thank you.